Hi everyone, thank you very much for taking some time out of your day to join us for uh, the Ansible Virtual Contributor Summit. This is the second Totally Virtual Contributor Summit uh, we've had. Um, first one seemed to go really successfully. Um, so thank you for everyone that joined in that. And it's nice to see some familiar faces and some new faces. Um, just a bit of housekeeping to start with. Um, we try to keep this really informal, so please do shout out if um, something's not clear. It's quite often that if you think something's not clear, there'll definitely be at least one other person. Um, listing that isn't following as well, um, we try to keep most of the discussion in IRC, so we're in hash ansible-community, uh, ansible-community on the Freeno channel. Um, you've all got the chairs, you've all got ops there, so you can do write whatever you want, we'll track the logs, pick actions in, um, feel free to assign more to me, or I guess that's where they go anyway, um, which should help. I hope that there's a lot of communication. This event is for all of you. This is the Contributor Summit. It isn't a Red Hat staff event in the public. It's all what do you want to get out of it and, and how can we help um, facilitate that. Um, just check we've got the links to the Etherpadden, uh, Blue Jeans chat as well. Um, uh, yeah, um, so yeah, this has been recorded. So the, both the, the video and audio and the RC logs. So I, um, if you've not had a look at the Ansible Code of Conduct before, uh, we invite you to have a read through that. We'll stick the link in IRC. Um, the videos will end up on YouTube as well. Um, you know, this is all out in the public. So if through the day there's anything that you're ever not happy with, um, feel free to message myself, Carol, um, Greg, Robin, or anyone else that's got ops in IRC directly, or I think you can do the same through BlueJeans. Yeah, you can do direct message on BlueJeans. So if it's either something that uh, you're not happy about or where you want to put a, a view in, but you don't want it necessarily being recorded, it comes from you, like feel free to use us as a proxy voice for that. Um, cool. So I think we're going to start off with a quick round um, of introductions. Um, so what, what, you what your name is, what you go by on GitHub and, and Freeno, because obviously that's where most of the, how we know each other. Um, and a little bit of a summary about uh, what you want to get from today. So since I've got the mic, I'll, I'll start and then I'll hand over to Carol to um, go to everyone else. So hi, I'm John Barker, but I'm generally known as Gundalo on IRC and GitHub. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting you, a lot of you before. It's great to see. Um, so I'm an associate manager now for the community team, but it's I've got a fun job of trying to make sure that collections work and that the contributor process is all good for that. Um, I've been with Red Hat for four years. Carol, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gundalo. Uh, my name is Carol Chen. You can find me as Cybat on RRC, Twitter, GitHub, etc. I'm also part of the uh, Ansible community team with Gundalo. And uh, I'm focused more on like meetups, events, virtual events like this one, and also uh, helping out a bit with like social media and the bullhorn newsletter. So that this you know contribution can come come in many forms. So um, definitely meetup is one of those those that I focus on. So if you do organize meetups, feel free to connect with me. And let's go. Probably easiest just by alphabetical order. So next, I uh, uh, on the blue jeans here. So next, I have a beer Dev A B E I R. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Oh no, that's fine. Um, so good morning. Uh, my name is Abir Dev. I'm a systems engineer at Dish Network, and uh, my RC nickname is A Dev on Freenode and uh, GitHub. Um, so. Yeah, uh, it's actually 5 a.m. here. I'm in the Wyoming. So I was actually part of the Ansible NYC uh, a year ago before I moved out here. So, yeah, uh, it was my first time on the uh, virtual summit. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Andrew. 
I don't have a last name. I just have Andrew on the blue jeans. Um, maybe is he on chat? <laughs> uh, if now we go to Baptista. Yeah. Hello, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm Baptiste. I'm 40 years old. I'm working in a um, company that developed uh, software for airport and flight company. Uh, and actually, okay, I use Ansible since uh, five, four years, starting with Kafka and Cassandra to automate things on distributed servers. And as I'm working since six months or nine months now on OpenShift, I started, um, I developed um, some playbook to deploy a manifest for the configuration of OpenShift. Uh, so I'm working mostly with uh, K8S module this time. Uh, and that's much of my work. Actually, today I'm also uh, writing a playbook to develop an, uh, de deploy an infrastructure on OpenStack to, de to deploy my OpenShift clusters I'm managing with my team, and uh, whatever I can, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, I I, deep, um, I I wrote a play um, uh, a post about what I'm doing uh, recently on Dev.2 uh, to explain because as I struggle to uh, switch from the system uh, deployment to thinking about the API with uh, KIS and local stuff and uh, and how to manage all the manifest and stuff. I thought about uh, sharing what I did to to help people for, about that, and that it. Thank you, Baptiste. Um, I actually saw your blog post, so maybe we can share that um, at some point. Thank you very much. Next, we have Ben Mildren. Hello, um, my name is Ben. Um, I currently work at DigitalOcean. I've previously worked at um, Pacona and Pythian database companies. I contributed the um, proxy SQL modules, um, also helped add DigitalOcean support to Molecule in version two. Um, basically looking to increase my contribution. So just join today to see um, how I can do that and lurk and listen. So, um, on I IRC, I'm persisted. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Um, Berkan? Berkan. <laughs> Sorry. B R K H A N. Berkan. Berkan. Berk Demir. Uh, no, sorry, Burkan, we can't hear you. Can you please check if you're mute? We hear a beep. <laughs> if not, feel free to type your intro in the Blue Jeans chat or RRC channel. Sorry if. Some of sometimes the audio doesn't work. Okay, let's go on. Um, Daniel. Hey Carl. So Hi. yeah, I guess all the people here might be familiar with me. I'm an engineer at Red Hat. Um, I'm basically involved into the networking and a lot of implementation stuff too. Uh, my my handle on the IRC is Dmelada, so feel free to reach me out. And I'm just here today to, to say this on Exclusive Environments, uh, Kubernetes Integration, um, Collections and Networking, basically. Also, feel free to ask me anything if you feel like it. So, thanks all. Thanks, Daniel. All right, next we have Felix. Hello. Um, I'm Felix. I'm, yeah, well... 
mainly I'm interested in Ansible and trying to contribute a lot and having fun with it. <laughs> and I'm mostly currently working on big community collections, that is community general and community network and community crypto as well. Not that big, but I'm also working on and internal test tools. And yeah, I'm just trying to get some things done, which I like being done. And besides that's also trying to get some new features done actually, but I hope I've managed to do that soon again. <laughs> I'm ISC, I'm Felix Fontaine, um, same as on GitHub. And that's it, I guess. Thank you so much, Felix. Nice to have you here. All right, Thanks Greg. It. <laughs> My boss. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm Greg de Kernersberg. Uh, uh, I've been around Ansible and Red Hat for a while. Uh, I guess I'm sort of the boss. Um, uh, right now, uh, uh, my most important role here is probably as editor-in-chief uh, of the Bullhorn, which is a job I'm looking forward to giving away as soon as possible to someone else. Um, but it started, and we put it out every two to three weeks, uh, and we're always looking for interesting content. Uh, it's a developer newsletter, so uh, the more developery, the better. Uh, and I'm hoping we'll have a nice long write-up of this event uh, for the next one. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks, Greg. Do we want to share the bullhorn outline later to the community? Yeah, it makes sense. We'll probably do a little section on it even if we want. I'll post mm -hmm. it in IRC for people who don't know. All right, thanks. All right, Gondolo has done the introduction harsh. Harsh Patel, are you around? Hey, Carol, Harsh, Harsh here. Yes, hi. Hey. Mm -hmm. I'm working as a DevOps engineer at, from Pune, India. So I'm uh, with I'm a, like a beginner with Ansible, but uh, I did a few deployments with Ansible before. So I'm trying to get more things to be done. Of course, right. with the part of the community itself. <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you. James, Jimmy? Hi, I'm James Camerata. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, I'm a longtime Ansible core developer. Been working on Ansible for coming up on seven years now. So yeah, long time. Uh, everybody, I go by um, Jimmy or some variant thereof on GitHub and Iron. Sure if you've been contributing to Ansible or doing anything with it, you've probably seen me around it. Thanks, James. All right. Ooh, <laughs> great one. <laughs> hmm, I don't have an Ansible mug. All right. <laughs> Next, we have Jeff Gearling. Are you back from getting your snack? Yes, I am. Yep, I'm Jeff Gearling, Gearling guy on IRC and GitHub. And uh, I'm mostly interested in talking about the, uh, the Ansible ACD distribution. Um, collections and anything related to OpenShift and Kate's Kubernetes. That's about it. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. John Emerson. John IM0. Emerson, John Emerson, are you around? I see you're unmuted, but I, we are not hearing you. Hello? Yes, now we hear you. Hi. Oh, good day. Um, yeah, John Emerson, I'm down here in Australia. Fantastic timing. Normally these sort of meetings, I think, are around 2 a.m. or 5 a.m., so I thought I'd just pop along and see what was going on. Um, Used Ansible for a couple of years at uh, one of the big telcos down here. Um, most recently, though, I've uh, hung up my boots and I'm a stay-at-home dad. So I'm just uh, I've, I'm out of the game for a bit, but I wanted to check out what's happening. Great, thanks for being here, John. <laughs> and Lillian, Lillian, oh, I I I won't even try to pronounce your last name. 
Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, my name is Lilian. I'm interested about novel automation with an as well. I'm seeing it in Python and other definite activity. Currently, I'm a system engineer in ISP company. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Um... Yeah, I usually create as a very rule for my job, custom rule. Yeah, it is a December SSA jam from our private jam host. Hello? Yes. Yeah. All <laughs> so right. From my English. Oh, no, you, you, you speak perfectly fine. Thanks for joining us, Lillian. And actually, I know you were here at the last uh, Contributor Summit as well. Yeah, yeah, and I thought yeah. you sent you something. And um, currently, the uh, mail doesn't go to your place. So hopefully, I'll get it to you so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Sooner later. Thanks for being here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next, we have MGR. Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Perfect. Yeah, my name is Madan. Um, so I was working for one of the telecommunications company in India. Um, recently, I moved from data center engineering team to automation engineering. Uh, you can expect that I'm completely a layman in Ansible. <laughs> uh, so I'm just trying to understand more and more. And my first project is to integrate Ansible with ServiceNow. So that is the main target for me. So I'm working around on that. All right, we all have to start from somewhere. So uh, we're happy that you're here with us this time. So welcome. Thank Thanks. you, Ger. Thank you. Uh, Misk. Oh, uh, my name is Michael Scherer. I'm a French system administrator. I'm working at Red Hat. I'm also working in a community team, but not the one from Greg, another community team. And I'm mostly here to see how people do contribute on Ansible. I'm one of the co-organizers of a yearly hackathon during French PyCon, and I kind of need to keep myself up to date, even if I do not think there will be a physical Python event in France uh, anytime soon. But uh, Still a good way to skip some work and some meeting to have other meeting today, and that's it. And I go by MISC um, on IRC and everywhere except on uh, uh, GitHub because it was already taken. So I go by MSHR. Thank you, MISC. Nice to have you here. And hello. Next. Pillow, pillow, are you around? Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, if you're trying to speak, you are muted, Pierre. Uh, I think he's chatting. Okay, you can read about uh, him, his intro in the uh, chat. Thank you. Resmo? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Rene Resmo on IRC and GitHub. I'm located in Europe, Switzerland, working as a system engineer. I'm a longtime Ansible user and lover, co author of O'Reilly Ansible Up and Running. I uh, contributed modules and plugins mainly in the cloud area. Uh, so Apache CloudStack, Vulture, CloudScale. Exoscale, so that kind of um, clouds. And I'm here because I'm interested in, in ACD and all toolings around it. Yeah, see how that would, would, will go. That's it, thank you. Thank you. All right, oh, Robin is here. Hi, Robin. Good morning. Morning. How are you? So early for you. Thanks for being here. It's only 425. Are you kidding? This is fine. Um, hi, I'm Robin Bergeron. I am 
uh, community architect slash Ansible project product manager, which means I get to do a lot of fun things like talk to legal and branding and trademarks and uh, talk to Red Hat about what's going on in Ansible and talk to Ansible about what's going on in Red Hat and try to bridge all the things magically during a global pandemic. And I'm Robin Bergeron on GitHub and R. Bergeron on IRC. And uh, apparently people can find my phone number on the internet. So there you go. <laughs> I've only been here a little less than Greg. All right. So it's so nice to have Robin here. Next we have uh, Sagi, Sagi Nightman. Hi, do you hear me? Yes, hi. We hear you. Oh. So I'm Sagi from uh, Red Hat, uh, working in uh, OpenStack and uh, maintaining OpenStack and Podman collections. It's my second contributor summit. I was very excited to participate in the first one and uh, happy to see you all here. And I'd be glad to hear last updates of collections, of course, and uh, Ansible uh, distributions and uh, 2.10 changes. We're up to date. So that's it for me. Thank you, Sagi. And next we have Tom Kirsten. Hello, good afternoon from the Netherlands. Uh, my name is Tom Kirsten and I go by T. Kirsten on IRC and as Tonk on GitHub. Uh, and I've been a long time Ansible user and contributor since 2012 in the early days of Ansible. Uh, the last couple of years, months, the code contribution has, well, Silently faded away, but I'm one of the meetup organizers and uh, uh, in the Netherlands. And well, together with Carol, I'm trying to find a way to get a virtual meetup uh, organized uh, in the near future. So maybe we could take that international because there's no physical presence. Uh, well, needed. So, and I will probably be here <clears throat> only listening in because I'm working. Right now, and we've got a problem in the in our data center, so I have to prioritize, I guess. Thank you, Tom. Yep. All right. Next, we have Toby. Yeah. Hello from my side. I'm I'm Toby. Uh, I'm a DevOps engineer um, from Cologne, Germany. I'm working for a uh, grocery delivery service, and um, yeah, I'm using or we are using as a team Ansible a lot, and I'm uh, contribute to a few models in the last years. So uh, I contributed to, to Postgres and in the last weeks uh, for the Xebix monitoring. Yeah, I'm just interested in, in uh, seeing this. I never attended to um, uh, the community and uh, stuff like this. And yeah, I'm interested in, in how the collection stuff is going on and um, and, and what can, uh, yeah. Um, maybe I have some questions after that for for how it's going on and also for yeah development stuff uh, with the collections things. That's it. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. Feel free to ask your questions anytime uh, in the chat or on IRC or even you know just if there's a break in, you can always uh, ask a question verbally as well. So. Thank you. And uh, last in the list, we'll go back because I think a couple more people joined. But before that, we have Toshio. Also quite early for you. Yep, I'm on the U.S. West Coast, so uh, I'm in currently the same time zone as Robin. Uh, I um, I'm a Badger or a Badger 1999 on GitHub, and uh, I am currently working on the. Uh, scripts and release process for the new Ansible 2.10 package, which is a collection of and uh, the Ansible base package for 2.10. And also working on putting together the docs, mostly the programming side of how to build them from the now distributed sources. Uh, I've been working on the core team on Ansible itself before this. But now I work with, with Greg and Carol and Robin and Gundalo. Thank you, Toshio. Um, as we go back in the list with Ali Nawaz. Uh, 
Alina was, are you here? If not, um, does Baptista, do you want to do an intro or did you already do that in chat? I think you already did that in chat. Okay. Uh, Ali has mic problem. Okay. Or right. uh, oh. your uh, Carol. Yes. All right. I, I thought you wanted to to go again because I saw you you saying something in chat, but okay. All right. Did I miss anyone? If uh, at least that's what Blue Jeans is telling me. But if if you haven't spoken yet, please speak up now. Feel free to do that. Okay, I guess if not, uh, we can get started with the agenda. Um, I just just briefly, uh, I just want to remind everyone, feel free to um, uh, please mute when you're not speaking, but if you need to speak, just unmute yourself. And uh, feel free to keep your videos on so we have this kind of interaction, interactive feeling ongoing, it, only if, if you're comfortable with that, of course. And uh, we'll be having breaks throughout the day. So, um, yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop them in IRC or chat. And I think I can pass this to Gandalo to start with the recap of what we're doing and why. Cool. Thanks, uh, Carol, and thank you, everyone, for the introductions. It's really, I think it's even more important on these virtual events that we understand what everyone's trying to, trying to get from the day. Um, Helps us sort of tailor the content a bit as we go along. So I guess we'll start off with a brief sort of history lesson. Um, once upon a time there was nothing, and then Ansible was created, and that was generally viewed as a good thing. Um, Ansible is really popular, which I think is shown by the fact that you've all take, chosen to take some time out of your day to join us. Um, we have. Four or five thousand contributors, uh, so different people have contributed code that's been merged. Um, every year, GitHub do a thing called the status of the Octaverse of the GitHub universe. They take, they look at all the repositories on GitHub and they see which are the most active. So, how many have had um, the most unique people, so the unique sum of people that have either raised an issue, pull request, or commented on an issue or pull request. The last at least three, maybe four years, Ansible has been in the top 10 of there. Um, last year, 7.5 thousand people either raised an issue, pull request, or commented on an issue of pull request. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Um, I think that really speaks a lot about the strengths of Ansible. The downside of being popular is you may notice we have a few open pull requests that we haven't quite got around to merging yet. I think it's about 2,000, but it is starting to drop now. Um, you know, and Ansible's popular, so we've had a load of scaling problems. Um, one of the advantages of Ansible is the plugin architect that you can go and write a module for service now, someone talked about, or a toaster, or uh, MySQL, or something, and not have to understand how Ansible works. You just write your module and make sure it spits out a little bit of JSON at the end, and that's what you need to do. So building on that, we've um, split out most of the modules from the Ansible Ansible repo into these separate things called collections. For those of you that have been around Ansible for three, four plus years, you may remember a thing called Ansible Modules Extra and Ansible Modules Core. Uh, if anyone does remember that, uh, please don't panic. We're not doing Git sub modules again. We have learned our lesson that that is not a good thing. Um, what we're doing splitting up into these separate areas. So I know Felix mentioned like community crypto before. So there is a cryptography working group. They've got modules for the uh, Let's Encrypt, the Acme stuff, and the Open SSL modules, and they work together to decide how to move those things forward. Um, likewise, the different areas of the networking groups have got collections for the individual networking platforms. So Cisco IRS, Cisco, NXOS, Juniper. 
um, or different groups there. And that's what we're in the process of doing at the moment. So if you were to check out Ansible, Ansible today, you'd find it's um, a lot smaller than it used to be. I think the modules is down to, and then we can uh, talk a bit about this later when we talk about Ansible base, but I think it's down to about 100, maybe 200 modules rather than 4,000 modules. Um, in a minute, once I start speaking, I'll paste some links in chat to sort of show where this stuff's up to. Um, most of these things are in the ans uh, GitHub slash, sorry, github.com slash Ansible collections repository. Um, they're all there. You can go and check them out, have a play around with them. Uh, Tosho, that's a badger, uh, saying just before that he's got some builds of that. So you can go and do a new checkout uh, that includes those. One of the design decisions that we've really been pushing for is that even though from a developer and community point of view, we've changed a lot how things are working. From an end user point of view, you don't have to know that collections even exist. Um, so in Ansible 2.9, you do pip install Ansible or you install Ansible, you get Ansible and all the modules. In 2.10, you do the same commands and you'll get Ansible base, which we'll talk about in a minute, plus the, the same set of modules. Underneath the hoods, they're, they're split up slightly differently, and um, uh, we'll talk a bit about that um, then. Um, yeah, so that, that's been one of the main things that from an end user point of view that we keep very, very similar. Um, we recognize that this is a large amount of work. Um, thankfully, you know, we're, we're pretty close to being able to release Ansible, um, Ansible 2.10. A lot more testing needed. Um, uh, we'll probably um, put that in as a bit more of a topic later um, to go through. Um, so that's sort of where we are today. Um, like I said, this is about everyone else, so I'd, I'd really want to open up the floor to, to questions at this point, because I want to make sure that we all have a common set of understanding before we sort of proceed. So I will now go and mute, and if someone's got some questions, please unmute and ask. Not a question, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that if they don't feel comfortable asking a question on chat, you can always ask any question in IRC, and I'll be monitoring uh, so that if there's a question, I can ask it on your behalf uh, in the chat. So I've just put a, a link in IRC that's got um, a set of terminologies, so I'll I'll work through that. The, the main we went back and forth a lot on this, um, and we decided the the simplest way of sort of explaining this is that in terms of packages, because Ansible is a very loaded term. Are you talking about the company that no longer exists and is just part of Red Hat now? The the package, the what you pip or you install the language, the ecosystem, the community. And we all got tied up in knots of trying to explain that. So what we've sort of done is we've, um, the thing that was the Ansible Ansible repository is now called Ansible Base. So that still does some bits, and Jimmy's going to talk a bit about that short, shortly. Um, you can pip install that still. But the thing that you get when you pip install Ansible now um, will be uh, a package with a dependency on Ansible base. It will contain the um, main bit of collections and then depend on the engine. Ah, oh, excellent. So you've got a question in IRC. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about the community structure, uh, sorry, the collection structure. We spent a lot of time sort of thinking about what would be the best format. Like, do we want to have lots of small collections? But what if someone's going to maintain those? Are they just going to be 
areas that quickly bit rot and die and don't go anywhere. So what we've ended up with is any group, be it a company, some people in the community, or anything in between, who want to maintain their own collection so they can do so. Um, I can see Resmo's on the screen, so I'll pick on him and say that, that the, their, um, his group of people are looking after some of the uh, different cloud modules. So they've got a few cloud modules there. Um, likewise, Felix. So they're about around specific um, uh, products and services, whereas um, crypto that was talked about before, so community to crypto, is around a theme. So, but it actually covers multiple different bits of technology. So it can cover things like the OpenSSL modules, the Let's Encrypt Acme stuff, and some other bits. Um, and then, and then, like I said, we've got networking Windows, which is around the whole Windows technology. Um, and then we have two sort of um, large buckets for, for things that don't have a dedicated home. Firstly, we have uh, community.network, which is for all the other related network content. So this is stuff that was previously in lib and simple modules networking. It's all moved into there. And then everything that's left over has been put into community.general. So that's probably the closest thing to modules and simple extra, Ansible modules extra from the from five years ago. We even once we sort of define those groups, we've still seen a nice steady flow of people going, oh, I want to take that bit of content out of community general and put it into their own uh, own collection, and that's great. Um, you can sort of think of community general as a bit of an incubator, a bit of a place for these new things to grow and develop and then once they're good and stable we can move them out into their own collections. Um, what we won't be doing in community general is if a company or group comes up and says hey we have 90 modules for monitoring toasters. We'll probably go excellent let's just put them in their own collection from day one. Um, I don't know what community general would look like in, in five years if there'd still be such a big collection there because I'm hoping that we'll be able to pull more things out. Um, so to answer a specific question about Zen, Zen at the moment is in the community collections repository. Um, yes, naming things is very hard. Cool. At this point I'd like to hang over to hand over to Jimmy if he's got his caffeine and good to, good to talk a little bit about um, Ansible Base what it is, why we have it, and, and how that's going to be released and managed going forwards. All right. So, yeah, so we're, if anybody's kind of uh, watching IRC, we are having a little bit of a discussion. Um, the question was if the Ansible package name will be changing, and it's kind of a yes and no answer. The Ansible package will continue to exist, like Gundalo mentioned also. Um, if you continue doing pip install Ansible, you'll end up with an Ansible installation like you do today. Um, but also you could install Ansible base directly and then you would just end up with the core engine along with, you know, only the plugins and modules that we include with the uh, base installation. Um, so yeah, so are there any other further questions kind of about how that's going to uh, kind of pick out. Feel free to unmute and ask as my alarm clock goes off. Birkin asks on IRC, uh, yeah. will Ants will have built in and default testing uh, method, something like Kitchen CI? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so one of the things that um, was really tried to be baked into collections was the ability to have tests exist in collections. Um, so collections will continue to be tested by the authors. Anything that's core maintained, we test, um, and we will continue testing that pretty much like we do today. Hopefully that answers your question.
Jimmy, do you have a rough sort of guideline on which modules and plugins have remained in Ansible base and why at, at a high level? Yeah, basically it was, we tried to keep a very minimal set of functionality, kind of uh, just, you know, a, a lights on functionality. Um, so obviously the core functionality in Ansible is SSH and local hosts. So as connection plugins, those stayed. Um, some of the lesser used community supported things like, you know, Docker and other plugins like that, um, or, you know, or the ones that got moved into their own collections. Um, things that are very specifically tied to other products. Um, we kept a lot of the core functionality around configuration management. So things like, you know, template, file management services, stuff like that, or, you know, anything that was labeled as core maintained um, is pretty much, I believe, the stuff that will, will be included in it. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I thought that was one of the main distinctions. Jeff Geerling also asks, is there any criteria for including any new modules in core at some point? Um, it's, it's a little bit trial and error right now. There are that even as we've started splitting them out into collections, we've moved them back into uh, the base. Um, things that we've kind of realized we want to have uh, be more generally available for other people. It's not there's no hard and fast rule on that. It's kind of the core team's discretion about what we want to support and uh, things that we feel we want to kind of provide to the community that makes, you know, it a little bit easier to get up and running with Ansible uh, with no other plugins installed. A collection can override, sorry, the... Uh, Mentioned the question. So in IRC, Jeff asked the question, can a collection override a core plugin? And the answer is yes, you can uh, override core plugins just like you can override plugins today. I believe it comes down to uh, specifying the collection order. Um, it, it is a little bit harder to override a core module uh, nowadays because uh, with the fully qualified names, you kind of expect, uh, we don't want things to get trampled on quite as easily. But um, yes, I believe it is still possible. You just have to kind of uh, specify your collection order carefully. Uh, so Birkin asks, will Molecule stay outside the main Ansible development? Uh, yes, because it's it's a separate team. The People working on Molecule are a separate team from the core developers. Um, they're part of our community and, you know, they've been brought in, but it, you know, they're, they're separate from the core team. So they, they work on the project at their speed. Uh, Felix mentions if you use the FQCN, then yeah, it's uh, very, very difficult to override it. Probably impossible unless you override the entire collection. That's kind of the point of using the FQCN to make sure that you use the exact module you want to use and not accidentally use something that maybe was included in the role. Uh, we had very many issues with people sometimes overriding a module to do specific functionality they wanted and then it causing problems. You know, it gets handed off to multiple developers and kind of gets hard to track down exactly why bugs happen sometimes. Uh, feel free to unmute and ask a question as well. Lillian asked a question on the chat on uh, uh, the blue jeans. Oh, I missed it. Uh, OLT devices, I'm not sure what that is. Could you explain?
To answer the question in general, though, uh, suggestions, tips to care if we create Ansible modules for anything. Uh, we welcome any modules you create for anything. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the, the, the point of Ansible is to be a general purpose tool that is flexible and modular so that you can write an Ansible to connect uh, with, with any device you can imagine. Uh, as far as how to write that, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know that anyone knows anything about OLT on this call. Um, maybe Carol does. <laughs> yeah, uh, there may be some, no, no, I don't. I just search for it. <laughs> this, this one I, I came up with. Folks on the networking team that you know know the deep, deep, dark, dark plumbing of you know how we connect the entire universe under the ocean um, and might have some guidance there around, you know, are there commonalities amongst the various brands of optical line terminal devices versus is it, you know, are they all very individual with their own special snowflakiness and different types of, you know, just like we've abstracted you know, certain things about Linux or certain things about networking. I don't know how much there is to abstract there versus very separate stuff. But as Greg mentioned, yes, we like all the things. Uh, chances are if you want to make one, I wouldn't be surprised if Googling maybe already would come up with one for you. And if not, there's probably already people Googling going, I can't believe this isn't already written. So. Yeah, Gundalo pretty much summed it up there. When people have brought this question up in the past, it's pretty much the exact same. If you can open a shell to it or if it has an API, you can manage it with Ansible. That's the long and short of it. Um, as Greg said, specifically with your device, you, you there might be uh, something out there or you might have to kind of compare uh, some of the existing plugins we have. but. Yeah, generally, if you can talk to it, you can manage it with Ansible. So, uh, Chuck and I are C. Uh, Baptiste mentions um, feedback about triage bugs is hard. Is that more of a question for later, Baptiste, or did you want to address that now? Yeah, let's loop round to the contributor bits um, once we've done the um, the, the more technical bits, I guess, first. But I'll make a note of that specific question. That, that's a good one. Thank you, Baptiste. Yeah. Any other further questions? I have a kind of a uh, little bit uh, complain, maybe. Or maybe I something missing, but uh, for example, if I have my fancy collections that I don't know, prepare a coffee, and I inject into this collection modules that uh, have copy name and just sends all copy files to some external service. And people use my collections in Playbook, for example, they do collections uh, uh, like dot uh, uh, fancy collection, yeah, and use copy module. So will they use this actually malware copy module or core module copy? If your copy module is kind of critical to the functioning of your collection, you should always have it referenced with the fully qualified name in your roles or however else your collection is being used. Um, otherwise, it will default to if somebody just has copy, it won't use the copy in your collection. It will use the one from the Ansible uh, base installation from the uh, legacy modules name. So pretty much if you want to be sure that your module, which may override kind of a core provided name, make sure you use the fully qualified name always. And that will prevent any issues with, you know, uh, 
just coincidentally, if another collection also provided a copy module, you know exactly which one you're using. So it should be actually default mode. The default is to use the Ansible core modules. Jimmy, what did we settle on for behavior if there is a module that uh, isn't in core and doesn't have the fully qualified collection name? Does it look through some kind of path or does it simply fail and say, we can't find this with an error that says, please include the FQCN? I forget the exact scoping rules there. Um, if if it will look, I believe it will look through, if you specify any collections in your playbook, it will use those, or any, uh, rather any collections in your configuration, it will use those uh, collections. Um, I believe it will search through those first and then it will fall back to using Ansible right. legacy modules. So there so, are mechanisms for explicit scoping. Right. You have to use those mechanisms, otherwise it'll simply go, I don't know where this, I don't know what this module is. Like it won't automatically yes. look through all your modules. Correct. Yeah, at some point soon, I would love to see some, ex like some deep examples of how we're doing FQCN scoping and things like that. It's one of those things where I suspect it's, well defined but we haven't described it fully anywhere yet and maybe that's one of the things that is a 210 blocker is to have that documentation um i i suspect that's still still taking shape yeah there's a couple open issues for documentation still on 2.10 we didn't make those blockers to the beta release but we made them blockers to the final release Sounds good. Thanks, Jimmy. Oop. Any further questions? Still some lively conversation going on in IRC regarding this. Jimmy, you'll be around for the rest of the day to participate in various things, right? It's not like we have to have all the questions right now. Right. Yeah, I'll be here. I know that Gundalo is AFK. I don't know if he's getting tea or coffee or dealing with a rescue. Yeah. Sir. Um... If we're ready to move on, since Gundalo's not here, we can just kind of move on and MC. He had uh, tapped Toshio to speak next. So, Toshio, you want to take it away? Yeah, sorry, I just stepped out to refill coffee. Thank, thanks, Toshio. Thanks, Jimmy. Yep. So, as uh, Jimmy mentioned, the the core piece, piece of Ansible is moving to an Ansible base package, uh, but the Ansible package will continue to live on on PyPI, now it will contain um, many collections all grouped together uh, so that when you install Ansible using PIP, you will get an experience that is very similar to what Ansible 2.9 is. Uh, some of the, most of the differences should not be visible to end users. Uh, our goal is that once you've got it installed, it should pretty much work the same way you're used to. Uh, your old playbook should continue to work uh, via a, um, a bit of configuration in the Ansible base package, which will make short names uh, for certain modules, the ones that used to be in Ansible 2.9 and before, uh, still work even though the modules are now in collections. But if you want any new functionality, new modules and so forth, uh, you would have to start using the fully qualified collection name for those. Um, 
you can try it out right now. We do have both an Ansible-based beta package on PyPI, and we have an Ansible alpha package on PyPI. So if you installed uh, Ansible equal equals uh, 2.10.0 alpha 2, A2, you would get the new packages installed and uh, see how they work. One thing that that has come up as we've used is that uh, PIP doesn't handle packages transitioning, being renamed, but keeping the same libraries and, and same uh, scripts in the renamed package very well. So um, you will have to do a PIP uninstall Ansible and then a PIP install Ansible 2.10 so that you have, you know, Remove the 2.9 package from your system before you install the new one. The uh, the package, the alpha 2 package that's up right now, should warn you and uh, complain, you know, that you need to do that uninstall, install dance, so that you don't accidentally get into a, a place where Ansible is not working. Uh, any questions? I am happy to answer. Uh, it's going on. Tosha, is it worth saying about what type of feedback we're specifically interested in in the the packages before we go to beta or release? Uh, let's see. It, they could be, yes. Um, so right now I've been mainly working on the the larger scale. What is, you know, what is the Ansible package in 2.10 going to look like? How do we put it together? Uh, so for me, I'm looking at feedback about does this whole thing when you install it, does it seem like it's just Ansible, you know, business as usual? Feedback that I got that um, we needed to do an uninstall first before we did an install was useful information. Uh, hopefully that's addressed as best as we can now, even though it's still a little clunky. Um, there's, uh, there's also feedback that should go to the individual collections. Uh, Felix, you and Gundalo probably take care of that aspect more than me. What kind of feedback would you like about how the modules themselves are working in Ansible 2.10? Uh, Felix, can you hear me? Yeah, thanks. Um, so I guess as the general, you know, we, we've moved a lot of content around and there's a, um, a file called runtime.yaml, um, previously known as the routing.yaml, that defines where modules used to live in Ansible 2.9 and what collection they're in now. Um, although initially this was auto-generated, it's just been moved around a lot since. So as we talked about earlier, we've moved content out of community general into dedicated collections. We may not have necessarily updated all the routing, so it's possible that we've got some broken or dangling links in there. So just running through your playbooks, checking those things are really useful. Um, also, if you have sort of third party modules, so they're modules that you've created yourself that aren't shipped in with Ansible, for example, you're managing some of your own equipment, um, checking that they still work, that we haven't totally broken the Python imports, that would be really useful to know. Um, but it's interesting because on one hand we said like from an end user point of view, nothing much has changed. But underneath we've moved everything around on disk and put in a load of plumbing and changed totally how things work. So we need to get your help and support to validate that we've not totally broken everything in that process. I'd, I'd be interested in maybe people can stick a plus one, minus one in either IRC or um, if you're not on there on BlueJeans of who's actually tested the um, the Ansible alphas one or two or looked at Ansible base. So plus one if you've done any testing with either of those or minus one if you haven't. Well, 
Well, we've got one plus one so far, and it's from Gearland Guy. Cheers, Jeff. But he has all the content in the world, so <laughs> maybe he could tell us how it looks so far. Yeah, I, I actually posted a link to the... I, I, so because I have, as you say, all the content in the world, I wanted to make sure that it was uh, somewhat tested on the new system. So I actually was working... Uh, with a couple people to try to get it working before the alphas were even released, and there were there were only a couple issues that I ran into with it, with the way that I do includes and roles and things like that. So I am pretty happy to report that all the playbooks that I've tested so far have worked without issue. And, that is uh, shocking. That was <laughs> it was a pleasant <laughs> surprise. So um, I mean, the, the cool thing is, so it, the reason I did this was I think it was maybe November last year, I I did something and it's like, none of this works. And that was disappointing to me because I didn't want to have to rewrite my whole book for collections. So seeing that everything works out of the box means that it, in the long term, you know, we'll start switching to FQCN. But in the short term, if you have a playbook that works in 2.9, it's going to work in 2.10. There's probably going to be a couple edge cases here and there, but I haven't run into them yet. That makes me super happy. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's what we're really aiming for. But there's so, there's, and for people that have been around on IRC for a while, you'll notice that I've, I've calmed down a bit, and I'm not getting quite as scared by by all of this stuff. And I, my sleep is back to whatever counts as normal these days. Um, so that, that's really good to hear that that's been working. For you. Um, I'd be interested in if if anyone has any reservations concerns if anything's scaring them and that may be just because we've not covered in any more in enough detail some of the hows or what's um because like i said this this is a run for for you and, 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 and we need to get for people's feedback and and also for all the people that have written minus one that have not done testing um would you have time to do some testing um if we could incentivize with some maybe funky swag for most crazy bug or something, and I maybe I'm making this up as I might go along, and I know we should never do game theory for bugs because uh, yeah, well, lots of reasons. But uh, what what could we do to help help people get some more testing with this? I was uh, reading ILC. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the main thing that, that Robin and Jeff have said. Um, you know, if you just do remove two, unsupport 2.9 and install 2.10, does everything just work? I mean, you know, don't, this is alpha software, right? Don't do this on production yet. <laughs> do it on your test environment when we're dash dash check. Um, all that stuff would be really useful. Any other questions on anything so far? I had a uh, kind of future looking question. He asked uh, for the Ansible package, will there be any new content put in it in the future? For instance, in 2.11, 3.0, etc. Is it, or is it more or less locked for new content going in? Um, so we, we do want to have new content, well, new collections, net new collections that don't have any old content in them included in the Ansible package uh, in 2.11 and going forward. 
Uh, we're trying to come up with criteria right now for what makes it okay for a package to go in. Um, is there some sort of quality metric, some sort of like automated testing needs to be passing? Oh, just what is it that, that determines um, what is okay and what needs to still bake for a while uh, out there in, in a separate collection before it can go into the Ansible package? Um, Gundalo, do we have a like a, a wiki page or an etherpad or anything that has like ongoing thoughts on that? I know uh, we've been brainstorming. Not yet. Um, so I guess one one thing that I didn't mention earlier is um, we're gonna go to a bit unconference and pick some topics that people would like to talk about um, for well for my afternoon for later on in the day, uh, and then tomorrow the next two days so. Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on your time zone, um, we're going to have some sort of open hackathon stuff, so we can sort of talk about those bits. Maybe that's something we can uh, collectively work on. Then I'll stick that in the agenda in the Etherpad. I've just put a link into IRC um, the practice, which sorry, I can't type in. But I'll put a link into IRC of which. Collections included in the new Ansible package, so people can have a look at that. Um, sorry, we just jumped around the agenda a bit, so I'm just working. So, any other questions on the packaging, the short term, how things are looking, how things are built, the testing that's needed, anything else on, on that? Cool. If not, I guess the, the next bit, so we talked to the high level of what we're doing, the packages, and the next bit in that progression is the talking a little bit around some of the individual collections. So we will swap into that, um, and I'll put some links in ILC. Well, I've just put a couple of links in ILC. Um, collections, if you've not had a chance to dig into them yet, they have a, a namespace, which is the bit before the dot. Um, for all, for most stuff, we're going for community dot and all of those. So it's community dot network, community uh, dot windows, community dot mongodb, community Cassandra, community crypto. Um, all of those repositories are hosted in GitHub Ansible collections, which I'll just put a link in. So you can see there the collections, and we'll get a link to Galaxy where they're hosted, once it's sorry, where they're published. So, so GitHub is the, the source, and then Galaxy is where the uploaded artifacts are. Um, so when you open and install Ansible, um, it will have included the content that's in there. Um, so there's a lot of different bits in there. Um, I've talked a little bit about the different working groups in there. Some of these things are going really well. Um, I don't know if we've got anyone here from the Sun, sorry, from uh, Zabbix, uh, the monitoring and graphing platform, or for, sorry, from monitoring platform or from Grafana, the graphing trending platform. 
these are pretty new communities and they've done an amazing job at um pulling together some content getting some releases out um and really improved the testing one of the things that is really great about having a smaller dedicated collection so if you think about ansible ansible we use shippable and i think there's i don't know 170 jobs that test jobs are kicked off for every pull request um and if you've ever depending on your time zone you work you may be more familiar with that as you try to cross the back like of once uh, america has woken up and started pushing more stuff through um one of the cool things with collections is that say in the case of sabix and grafana we don't care particularly about testing every pull request on different operating systems or rel than toss ubuntu what we actually care about is testing every pull request against a different mix of python versions and different versions of Grafana or sabix so the test matrix we actually test the last three major stable versions of the grafana against multiple sets of python and that's how it gives us some real confidence in that the the code works for example there's a new major update to one of those recently one line changed in the github actions file create a pr and we know that the the modules and roles all work correctly against the new version of grafana which is great um for collections that are bigger and you do want to test against multiple operating systems we can still uh, give you access to shippable and that's one of the reasons for having this new ansible collections repository is that i can go and expense um use things which my boss greg approves so we can have lots of testing uh, so we've got a mix of things so github actions um shippable where we want the different mix of operating systems because we can still get aws and if you know windows azure so windows azure uh other major operating systems mac os and all that stuff just works very well um on friday so the 10th we are going to put a um a freeze on any more content moving around going on for the ansible 2.10 release um and just make sure that the collections that we've got are, are good that list is the uh, ansible build data repository that i put a link in rc earlier I think there were 60 uh, collections that are included in the new package that Toshi was talking about. Um, uh, I think a little bit late. I, I don't know, Carol, when are we having a, a break? I can't remember when we're, we're doing that. Uh, we're supposed to have a break after State of the Union, but I think we already, we can have a break when 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 we need now yeah yeah because I'm, I'm just wondering because i jumped around the order a bit because um right. i wasn't expecting jimmy to be awake so early so i appreciate you joining us jimmy um if i want to talk a bit about getting collections into 2.11 or if i want to just say maybe that's a future thing uh and then we break a bit do the introductions and then I see Mr. Greg Sutcliffe has arrived, so people can do their new introductions, and then we can do the uh, the stats side of things. So I don't know if you want to call, because uh, I guess we've been going for an hour and trying to give people a little um, coffee break. So 15 minutes break. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you back in a few minutes. I'll do a timer.